Good evening, this is Dwayne Lowry for the DPP Grain Desk on uh, Sunday, October 13th. It's currently uh, 5.15. Uh, we find ourselves pretty much in the same place we were a week ago in many respects. A week ago we were focused on debt ceiling uh, possibilities, shutting down the government, uh, possible solution, no solution. Um, kind of at that point here again. Put things in context. Um, um, Last Thursday and Friday, the stock market had a recovery on optimism that a, a deal would be uh, reached. Uh, there was expectations a deal was in the process of being reached on Friday. Uh, Friday, shortly after the Dow closed, the White House came out and uh, basically said we don't have a deal yet. Over the weekend, uh, talks kind of broke down between the uh, President and uh, uh, the House. Uh, all activity now is largely in the uh, Senate. You've got uh, Mitch McConnell and, and uh, Harry Reid in, in discussion. Um, interestingly, Mitch McConnell was basically quiet throughout the last uh, uh, two or three weeks. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact he's involved in his own re-election campaign. Uh, but now that you've got Harry Reid and Mitch McConnell together talking, I think that's probably a sign that uh, we are going to get a fix to this, but at the present time we do not have a fix. And uh, in relationship to expectations on Friday when the stock market uh, had rallied about 300 points, um, I think there's a lot of disappointment around the stock indexes right now as I look at the screen, which started at trading at 5 o'clock 15 minutes ago basically. Uh, the Dow index is down 100 points, crude oil is down 50, 60 cents. Um, I think in relationship to where the market was at on Friday, you have disappointment. Uh, that means you have uncertainty. Um, and I think that, I don't know how much agriculture markets will be impacted that tonight, but it might have some initial bearing. Uh, but I don't think a lot. There has not been a clearly definable connection between uh, grain prices and outside markets for some time. And there has not been any clear connection uh, to, uh, uh, between the two sectors um, during the last uh, two or three weeks when we we're working our way up to a, a possibility of a shutdown or during the process where we have the shutdown and we're, we're trying to talk about uh, reaching a conclusion to avoid the uh, uh, default possibilities that go if, we don't, if we've reached this debt limit. So I, I'm not trying to say that there's a connection to ag prices tonight, but I do want to cover that initial, this initially because I think it's an important storyline. So in relationship to Friday, uh, markets are going to be nervous, um, and I think that probably is going to continue uh, through Monday's trade, possibly into Tuesday's trade, uh, before we reach a deal. And even if the uh, deal, which right now the pathway appears that we're going to start in the Senate, try to find some agreement there and then shift the House, even if they reach an agreement in the Senate, there's going to be a lot of concern about whether or not uh, something can pass in the House. So I don't think that w the markets are going to be calm uh, by the time uh, the sun rises on Monday morning. I think there's a better chance that the uh, concern and emotions will elevate and escalate um, during uh, the er first couple days of this week. So going back to last week, we're back at the same spot. I think we still have a situation here where the ultimate motivator for uh, legislators to reach an agreement will be markets, and that will be the stock index, et cetera. And I think we still have to probably put a little more fear in here. This environment is not good for any market, uh, but so far there's not been a connection to ag. As far as the eggs are concerned, um, whether there will be some uh, harvest disruptions over the next couple weeks, but not anything long lasting. Um, and I think that uh, uh, weather really isn't a, a factor on a day to day basis. Uh, global developments, I don't see too much there. Uh, and we haven't had export sales data for a while because of the government shutdown. Uh, but I think there is a general uh, belief going on that uh, there might be more global demand activities going on right now than what we've sensed there, there have been. And I think that that might be providing some support. It's interesting to note that uh, China's domestic um, corn and wheat prices um, appear to work or, or appear to calculate in a manner that would, would allow imports uh, of uh, wheat and corn. And uh, you can't use that as the only uh, reason to, to uh, think that prices are getting cheap enough because 
that's actually been the case for uh, a period of time here during the summer. But now as the U.S. comes on board with new crop supplies available, uh, more certain supplies available, uh, I think that we have the backdrop and the, the, uh, the basic conditions set that we should anticipate a stronger appetite from China. And I think we should be, uh, anticipate uh, maybe the, an opportunity for demand to create a floor in prices. We've seen it happen in wheat. The wheat market has performed well in the last uh, several weeks. It's performed better than a lot of people expected. Never got as cheap as some people expected. Um, and during the last uh, washout in prices in corn and beans, wheat really didn't participate it. A lot of people tried to be short wheat, long corn as a, as a very sweet strategy. Uh, that uh, efforts in those intermarket spread uh, sectors of the trade uh, intensified quite a bit in the last, uh, say, 10 days or so. Uh, but Friday's action, you know, continues to show that anybody that tries to pick a top or sell this wheat market seems to get run out, whether they're true doing it in the intermarket spreads, being short wheat, long corn, or whether they're just trying to sell wheat. Technical conditions over the last several days were vulnerable for some type of corrective weakness in wheat, but, you know, we got a little bit of a break. We had days where the market was down, but then it would come back up. Overall, it was performed with uh, a lot of resilience. Friday's action in wheat, uh, the wheat traded lower but ended up closing six, seven cents higher by the time the day was over. And I think when you look at the wheat market, I'm beginning to think that whatever opportunities we had for corrective weakness, it's over. And I don't think you're going to see uh, that much weakness here. And I think that assessment is going to gain traction here over the next uh, several days. So any weakness that we get to start the week in wheat, I think, will be well supported. Uh, with, because the relationship between wheat and corn is already so historically wide, if you really believe that uh, the wheat market's going to rally, you can't be thinking corn market's going to break very much. And when you look at China's domestic corn prices, it, it gives pause to be in too bearish here in corn. The other thing is um, the prices that corn is trading at right now is not significantly different than where it was in August or a month ago. Um, we've had some uh, swings and some range trading. We had a little bit of a rally and then the market would break. But going back to where the market was when we first traded a, a, a summer sell-off, so to speak, we're not significantly lower here. And considering the better than expected yields, considering the very sentiment, they've not generated a lot of downside momentum pressure uh, here. And I think you still have a situation in the corn market where it's inevitable that you're going to get a very thorough short chasing, short cleansing event in the corn futures here. And I do not want to be uh, short corn here at all. I know the sentiment's bearish. I know they talk about better than expected yields. But uh, I, I don't think this is a place to uh, try to trade the short side. I think the bears are going to get caught here. It's just a matter of time. Could it work lower? Maybe some, but I don't think significantly. I think you're probably looking at getting a 15 or 20 cent rally relatively quickly in corn. You may then come back down and make a new low again, but you're not going to go anywhere. We're at the bottom side of parameters probably for the next few months. Uh, maybe you could go lower sometime you know, next spring, uh, so early summer. I wouldn't rule that out. But over the next uh, three months, let's say between now and the end of the year, I think you're at the bottom side of parameters. I think if you're a producer, and you've got unsold inventory, I think you look at step back here. This is not the time to get you know, with uh, microanalysis. You step back and look at it and say, you know, we're, we're at the bottom side of parameters. We're a long ways off where we were. We're cheap relative to uh, uh, China's ability to import and the prices of their domestic sector. You know what? This is just not the place to be selling corn. The specs are too short. There's too much bearishness around. I just don't want any part of being short corn here. As far as beans are concerned, uh, same storyline, you got better than expected yields for beans. Uh, the difference w w with the producer on corn versus beans, they're not selling much corn. I think the producer has been willing to sell beans, I think, in the last two weeks on the recovery rally that we had uh, when futures got to uh, two or just above $13 in November futures. I think farmers were selling uh, beans there. They, by this time, they could sense the yields were coming in better than expected. $13 uh, futures. Uh, looks better than what their corn price looks like. They know they're not going to sell corn. It makes it easier for them to make sales of beans. Whether that's right or not, I don't know, but I'm just telling you that what's going on is the farmer is more willing to sell beans, and I understand that. 
Um, as far as uh, um, tonight's activity is concerned, um, I think we probably start lower just because that's the default setting. Uh, it's harvest time. The trades vary. Uh, Friday was a poor performance. Some people will talk about outside markets being weaker and trying to put, put that on as a reason to be bearish. Uh, but uh, wheat's going to be very well supported, let's say three to five cents below the market. It doesn't have to break very much. You're going to find technical buying. I think the fundamental support uh, is uh, developing in wheat where uh, big longer term traders are looking at global uh, wheat statistics and saying they don't want to be very sweet. Um, as far as corn is concerned, I've already kind of discussed that. Any weakness in corn tonight is going to be uh, minimal and find it very difficult to build downside momentum. I think we're looking at getting a 15, 20 cent rally in corn very quickly here. Uh, but we may have a market that for the next 30 days has a difficult time sustaining anything. We, we, could, we could rally 15, 20 cents and break 20, 25 cents uh, 10 days later. Um, as far as beans are concerned, we're within uh, several cents of the, the, the lows made a couple weeks ago. Uh, we certainly can violate that low, but I don't think we're going to develop any meaningful momentum here. I think the other thing to point out is Overall, global demand prospects, I think, are improving, stabilizing at minimum, and uh, I just don't see much uh, advantage in trying to sell the market here. And I, if you're a producer, uh, it might be right to be looking for to make sales on rallies, but I don't think it's unreasonable to believe that you can get a 40 or 50 cent rally in, in uh, July corn futures, for example. I don't think it's uh, unreasonable at all that you can get that type of rally. I think there are better selling opportunities ahead, uh, but I think that it's also important to point out as you drive down the road and look in the rear view mirror and see seven, eight dollar corn, you know what, we're not going there anytime soon. So we have to change our thinking about what a good price is, but I don't think that means you have to make sales today. For the DPP Grain Desk, this is Ben Dwayne Lowry. Thank you.